So, welcome to my explanation video of the factory I posted a few hours ago on Reddit, uh, which is a car belt based smelter. Uh, the production stats are given are as follows. Uh, this is the only thing running in the world at the moment, and we have 400 furnaces which produce about 77,000 77, iron plates per minute. So, uh, you may ask, how does this thing work? And the basic answer is with lots and lots and lots of little details. Um, let us first examine uh, a row of the smelter, uh, which I have put a little bit down there. Uh, you may notice that I am running the game at half speed. This is because of recording. My laptop isn't really able to handle everything that well. Uh, so, it's a lot more stable like that. Uh, so, here we are. So, uh, this is the design for one lane, and it's basically copied 25, uh, 16 or 25, nee, 16 times. And uh, how does it work? Well, we have the standard, uh, a more or less standard 8.8 design, which is a little bit compacted because we basically inlined all the inserters, and we have belts on the outer lanes. So why do we, we do it that way? And the problem is that that in the basic 8.8 design we have two spaces between the furnace and the beacon. And one of these spaces will be the belt, uh, where our car will be going. Um, the problem is that we need to place some, split, uh, some inserters somewhere. And if we place them like that, we have two problems. First, the car will get stuck or the tank will get stuck on this inserter and we can't circumvent this problem. There is no way uh, we can circumvent this one. And this limits us to only cars since only cars are able to fit inside this gap like he's seen here. Uh, and this means we can't use the more compressed version of a car belt where we have cars like this we need to have them aligned with the belt, since they won't fit in any other case. The second problem, and that's one, is, is basi it's basically lucky that we it, it works, is that a splitter will always prioritize, uh, uh, not a splitter, uh, an, an inserter will always prioritize a belt to pick up something from. So even if we have a car standing here, and there is something in the car, uh, and all of this has power, uh, this inserter will not pick up something from this truck. It will always prioritize the, uh, the belt no matter what you do. Uh, the only chance for this inserter to pick something up from this trunk is for the belt to be removed. So if I remove the belt, now this, the inserter will take the iron out of there. It's not this way the other way around. So. There, it's build order dependent. If we place this uh, the inserter, we can imagine this, that, that this inserter is always trying to find out where to place something. Once he finds anything, he will save that thing. And if he again tries to place something somewhere, he will first try to to uh, to put it in the safe thing. So if we first put a car here, now the inserter thinks, yeah. I'm always putting something into this car. Even if we now place a belt, the car is prioritized. If the car somehow vanishes, now the belt is priority. We will use this fact uh, later on, but for this design here, it's not important because the splitters and, uh, and the inserters are taken from and putting items beside the belt, seemingly. But the weird hitbox of cars allows them to take items from there and put them in this uh, thing. No, it doesn't work because I didn't set up the filter, but now it will. And there we go. It takes items out and puts them back in. And I did come up with this, but after a long time of researching, I found out that some guy named uh, Ant Elite already did this. Uh, the video had barely any views and I didn't find a reddit post or forum thread or something uh, for this, so I'm kind of sad that nobody did something with this design. Uh, so yeah, now you know it. So now we 
that we understand how this thing goes, there are two things that are important and they are both on the very first row of this whole thing. Uh, the first one is uh, that I am using the car to its full potential, so I send in a full trunk of, car of iron ore. The problem with this is that the first inserter, he will take out some iron ore and the second one too, but the first output inserter, he doesn't have a place then to put his items, because he will only put iron plates in here if there is an empty stack. And we solve this problem by preemptively taking out some of the ore, and once the car comes back around, we put it back in, and we take just enough that the first two input inserters empty the first stack. Uh, secondly, uh, we have an alignment issue. You may notice that I have here such a weird curve and the two beacons. These are purely for alignment purposes. Uh, I will later show you the loader, which is down here, and it's it's only it's it doesn't align the, the cars perfectly. It's align it aligns them good enough for the loader, but all the rest of the aligning is done up here. Uh, first with these two beacons, this fixes the alignment so that the car will go on this up lane. But if you then turn the cars around, they may get they get stuck on this down, uh, lower lane here, and. I don't know why this exact configuration aligns them right, but it does, and you only need to do it once for each car, so now that each car has already done one loop, I could remove this, um, but I have it just for academic purposes, I guess, and you then see all the other lanes, they don't have it. Uh, you only need to uh, look out for leaving one place at the side extra, so that I couldn't place the belt here, or else the cars would get stuck on this power pole. And the last thing to mention is uh, timing and exactness. Um, you could build this thing um, in a way that it doesn't really matter how much iron ore is consumed and how much iron plates is end, ends up in each trunk, um, but my loader that I built down there uh, it only works because I know exactly how many items are in each item in each trunk, um, and for this I really want to have exact control over how many iron plates land in each cog in each trunk. So how it how I do it is you have the, the biggest problem or your biggest enemy is the productivity bar. Uh, it goes up only if in a fifth of the speed. So if you have the input inserters take a full, if their maximum stack of 12 items, uh, then you will sometimes get 14, sometimes 15, and sometimes 16 items, I think. And that's not good enough. And therefore I restrict the stack size, in, uh, which is, by the way, controlled over this constant combinator, as well as the filter for all the inserters, um, to 10, such that 10 iron ore will always produce 12 iron plates, and this will make this whole thing deterministic, and I will know exactly that after all of this, each trunk uh, will have emptied all of his 4000 ore, and he will arrive down here with an exact amount of 4800 iron plates. Like you see here, there are only 48 full stacks. And these are then unloaded here, and later on the same car goes up here where it's loaded again. So uh, before I show you the loaders and unloaders, I show you the car loader, uh, how I get the cars onto the belt. Uh, I use a timer, uh, I, oh, I'm, I didn't explain it, but it should be obvious that uh, these cars, they are all on the timer. Um, I time it just enough that each car gets sent just in time such that this melting operation is finished and then the new iron ore comes in. To be exact, it's not exact, it's uh, the amount of time uh, this furnace needed and needs to smell 10 items is about 223 and a little bit of a tick. And 
I spaced this out to 224 ticks. So there is a little bit wasted. The uptime of this furnace of these furnaces is 99.7%, which you also see on this production window. If all the furnaces were 100% utilized, you would expect here uh, a number closer to 77,400 iron ore per, uh, iron plates per minute. Um, but that's close enough for me for right now. Uh, and I use the same timer down here. Uh, and to load the cars, you simply rotate them either east to west or west to east. For consistency sakes, I am always rotating um, them uh, west to east. You then hold the left mouse button and just run upward. And it will place the cars. Uh, since I have already enough cars, I simply delete all of them again. And, and you can do this until all of them loop again uh, once you set up everything. Um, then I will first explode, uh, explain the car loader, which is a little bit simpler than the unloader. Um, first we use the nice feature that a car fits exactly between, an inser uh, between inserters, uh, or rather easily. And the hitbox is such that if we hug the left inserter, this stack inserter can insert in this car, and this stack inserter can take out of it. This means that we can insert into this car with a stack inserter and a longhand inserter and take out with a um, stack inserter, uh, which is important because the train from which we are taking our items, he has some dull time. Uh, the time it takes until the train leaves and the new one comes, these inserters do nothing. So for uh, to allow these stack inserters to have their maximum throughput, we need to have a higher input rate on the left ones. Uh, uh, a few notes to these cars here. Um, they will fill up because it, the left ones are slightly faster. Uh, it's not much and I recommend you pre-fill them up because the upper car from for, for each cargo wagon will fill up first while the lower one may empty and that's a problem because uh, we load these cars exactly full. Uh, on, on each cargo wagon each car gets exactly 500 items so that times 8 we get 4000. I mainly choose 8 because I think it's a more or less standard uh, train size eight cargo wagons for ore trains. Um, and the fact that they have uh, free, uh, only three locomotives on one side only, is the fact that the timings are so tight. I can't make, I can't add another car at the backside or the timings work, don't work out and the station doesn't load fast enough. Um, you could save this design by uh, doing a technique I, that I call train stacking, uh, which I will show you at the unloader. Um, but here this worked, so I used it. Uh, note though that you, uh, you may ask yourself why these two inserters don't operate on the same clock cycle as all the other ones. And the reason for this is that if I do this, then on the last swing, which would fill up this trunk, the inserters just don't do anything. I don't know why they don't, they don't do it, and it's these two, not just the last one or something, it's always these two, and they refuse to put in the items, and uh, I solved this issue by simply having them uh, operate whenever they want, that way they will fill up this car, and since it's always uh, every item is counted, um, they won't uh, more items into here than they were intended to. Uh, but it guarantees me that these cars are full. So now to the loader, which is much more complex. Uh, it consists, it, it's a much more compact uh, thing. I could, I theoretically could use a similar design as up there, uh, which would make this whole thing longer. Um, but I, try, I wanted to see what's the most compact loader or unloader, uh, since you can reverse, reverse this thing, I could make. And this is, I think, more or less the maximum. Um, I would 
Each car comes with 4,800 plates and is unloaded over a length of only four cars. Uh, this whole thing operates on a clock cycle of 224 ticks, which comes at about 1,200 items per second. Uh, so we have an unloading speed of about 400, 400 items per cargo wagon length, which is about 10 belts. So, yeah, that's a crap load of items. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, it's 300 items per cargo wagon, which means it's only about 7 to 8 belts. <laughs> So, how does it work? It's four times the same slice, which is down here. Uh, we first, first there is an easy part. We can directly insert from the cars into some buffer tanks, which are positioned here and here. Uh, if you are going to position them, I'm always doing it like this, that I'm using the left inserter as a guide mark, and when it's red like that, I simply press my left mouse button and then move my mouse to the right until the tank places. And then I know that this tank is on the right uh, position. Uh, you, there isn't much wiggle room how far up or down you place this thing. Um, I try to more or less place it centered. Uh, and you can see it at the hitbox only after the tank is placed, which is a shame, but that's the best we can do. Uh, it, it works with quite a wide range of uh, placements, so place them where you like. And the blueprint is made like that, that everywhere where there is hazardous concrete, hazard concrete, you need to place a tank there uh, in weast to est orientation. I don't think the other ones w will work. And that's the more or less easy part, it's simply direct insertion from, a, from the car into a tank, buffer tank into a, the train car. But then you may ask, why the hell do we take out the items that we just loaded in here and load them further into the next train? And the answer is throughput. This train does, doesn't have enough throughput on its own since its downtime, downtime is about one third of the whole time uh, needed. I think it's about 200 ticks until uh, this train leaves and the next one arrives and only 400 ticks loading time. Uh, that's not enough. Uh, for these inserters to keep up with the items that are coming out of there, out of the cars. So, our main problem is that this train needs to stay in this position longer, uh, or else these inserters aren't active long enough to have a high enough throughput. The only possible way to have this train stay longer is if it's, uh, if it's either faster uh, in clearing the, the station, which I already optimized. The next train is already immediately behind the, the current one, and these cars have uh, nuclear fuel, and you can't make it faster. If you add more locomotives, you have one extra cargo length that the train needs to go through, and you can just try it out. That's the fastest one. So the only other possibility is if the cargo wagon doesn't get filled as fast. And that's a problem since we our main goal is to fill it. So uh, what do we do? And the answer is we can unload it and therefore seemingly may make this cargo wagon load slower. Uh, it, it's, it's a really nice feature, I guess, um, that only in the downtime of the outermost train, which is this one here, uh, that's the only time where this car, uh, the next train is effectively loaded. And the timing works out in that way that this, this train has an about a three times higher uptime than the outermost one. And we can again extend this one, I, I think it's again times three or something, uh, which is which then meets the required throughput of these inserters. Uh, you can calculate it, I did, and that's how I ended up with three things, uh, with three trains, but I guess you can just try, out, try it out. Um, it's diminishing returns though, so if you plan on using this somewhere else, you should really calculate it, because um, the percentages you get are smaller and smaller and smaller the, the more trains you add. So um, that's the, the easy part. Um, now, the more complex part is the other side. 
uh, we can't have a train at the same thing uh, just mirrored on this side because belts and trains tracks can't cross so we can only unload to one side of the belt uh, so the other side needs to be unloaded onto belts and then per underground belts brought to the other side so how do we do it? We use six st stack inserters, which are some of which have a lowered stack size, uh, and unload into train into tanks. Now, a thing you need to know uh, to understand why this works uh, as well as it does is uh, that these. Um, Belt mechanics are kind of weird. Uh, each belt has 32 slots uh, where items can be, and each item takes up nine slots, uh, like that. And that's that's everything is one belt. And now the, the belt speed of a blue belt is such that each item moves every tick three belt spaces. So in the next tick, this item will be in these slots. So, what does this mean? This means that if we take an inserter, uh, a stack inserter, which can place 12 items, and we let it place items onto a belt, then we may ask ourselves, how, how far is this spacing in there? And ideally, it would be just enough that an even number of iron plates would fit in there. But sadly, it's not. The full speed of this stack inserter is 58 ticks, and one item moves in uh, moves nine spaces in three ticks. So to have an even number of spaces uh, of of iron plates uh, spaces in there, the inserter timing must be a multiple of three, and the nearest one is 60. Uh, since 75, uh, 57 isn't possible since we can't make the inserter go faster. And that's a problem uh, in and of itself, since that limits the throughput of this inserter further than necessary. Luckily, uh, the whole timing of my whole setup uh, results in, in a timing that perfectly matches. So that all these inserters that are taking the items out of the, uh, the tank again have exactly the same speed as the inserters putting things into them. If their the timing is such that they all swing once every 60 ticks or once a second, um, it, it's kind of a nice coincidence, but it's that's how it works. And now remember that I said that the inserters sometimes that uh, the insert priority for putting something onto a belt or into a train track is uh, or into a tank trunk is kind of weird and that it's build order specific and we see this in this underground belt we have three inserters which are pointing to it and the tank is up there and all three inserters could place items into this tank but only one of them does so only this one does the other two will always put their items onto the, onto this underground belt and that's where it's it's nice that it's consistent like that uh, because this is build order dependent we first need to place down the inserter which should place the, his items into the tank then we need to place down the tank then the underground and then the other two inserters uh, the nice thing is we can first place all inserters and all the undergrounds uh, and then place the tank and we can then use the inserters to place the tank then we delete the inserters and the underground to then replace the underground, replace the inserters, and connect the inserters up to the timer, as well as copy their settings. So only if we do it in this uh, sequence, everything will behave right. So if I put iron plates in there, you will see that these inserters put the items onto the belt. While if I give this inserter iron plates, he will immediately put them into the trunk. So, um, yeah, and that's more or less it. We have one underground belt, which is supplied by these two inserters. Uh, then we have uh, here the same one, uh, this, the same 
idea again. Then we use one down here and one down here and weird side loading mechanics um, to achieve a, a third belt with two inserters in output from. And on the other side, we only have two spaces left, uh, two vertical spaces left where we can uh, output an underground belt. Uh, first of all, in this space, we can't do that since we already have one. In this space, uh, we can't do it because the only we we can't we doesn't don't have enough belt length to go to the other side, so we need to place some underground belts in this area here. But since here is a uh, long-handed inserter which we need for throughput, we can't place a belt here since this belt would have priority over the tank since the inserter is taking from that belt. Uh, on on this lane we already have one. On this lane we already. We too already have one. Here we also can't place one because this long-handed inserter would be in the way, and therefore we only have one slot left, and that's one that we use. So we need to somehow put six stack inserters and two long-handed inserters full of throughput in through only two blue belts. And luckily, that's almost exactly possible. And uh, I'm using the new fancy uh, splitter features with input priority, and it works out and it only works if the timing is exactly 60 uh, ticks. If we use the 58 ticks uh, timing then item, the items will stutter and each stutter will take a, a cause a one tick delay on the corresponding splitter uh, inserter which will then throw it off cycle and use and since they are timed perfectly uh, it just skips the next cycle which dramatically lowers its input. Uh, so I guess it's really nice that it's that compact and that it works. And on the other side, we simply go through the first few, few, uh, three trains with underground belts and come out to the last three, uh, which are loaded from the right side of the belt. Uh, for the first one, we first take our three uh, underground belts where we have two inserters input each. Uh, we split the middle one and merge it, merge it to the outer ones so that we have an, uh, effectively an output on these two splitters with three inserters each. We then split, uh, we use the uh, fact that they are outputting to both sides to send one side to the, other, uh, to the next train and one side to the train here. A belt, a blue belt, which has input from three uh, stack inserters can be unloaded by four stack inserters. So we use two here and two on the next one. And for the long one, we use these two and these two back there. If we uh, load a belt with three stack inserters and a, red in, uh, and a long hand inserter, then this isn't enough. We first need to increase the speed at, uh, from uh, of, of a of an inserter by splitting uh, the belt to its lanes and then splitting to two inserters and we also need to time them. If we don't time them it may be, it, the effect may be that uh, there will be a stutter, a stutter down the lane. So that's what we're doing here. We're also splitting this free inserter and one red inserter belt up into two parts which we uh, if you look here, here only the upper lane can go through while here only the lower lane can get through. And the last belt that's down here uh, is also a first lane split and then each lane is split onto two inserters which are always also timed. Uh, in the upper design up here I use one timer for all the inserters. Uh, it's sufficient uh, but you can also like in the design down here have each lane on its own timer and yeah, that's how that thing works. And yeah, I really encourage you if you're interested to go through the calculations of this thing, um, because then you will see how tight most of these are and uh, the nice fact that these things uh, come out exactly. Uh, but that's more or less it. And I wish you much fun in trying to build your own. Uh, so that's it for me.